I think let's kick off uh, with the ECB decision yesterday. Of course, keeping rates unchanged, a disappointment to some, but uh, uh, indicating further measures to inject liquidity into the banking system. What is your response to some of these initiatives uh, introduced by the ECB? Well, there's no question that the alternative measures that were announced yesterday are welcome. As many investors are aware, we're moving away now from a sovereign crisis towards a banking crisis once again. So any form of liquidity provision from the central bank is of course welcome. In terms of the currency impact, however, I think the ECB are only delaying a rate hike at this time and we're expecting a 50 basis point rate cut probably at the bank's uh, December meeting. That will mean that Euro will probably trade quite heavily against the dollar as more and more investors expect that sort of a move in coming months. And that's of course when you'll have a new ECB president uh, as uh, Trichet's term comes to an end. Do you think he'll have this more dove he'll be supportive of this more dovish stance? Yes, I think so. I mean, obviously, the central bank's mandate is to contain price pressures first, but also provide stabilisation to the European financial system. And that stabilisation is increasingly being called into question uh, in recent weeks. Of course, there's been somewhat of a lagged response from governments on the fiscal side to provide a solution to the European sovereign and banking crisis. And so the ECB will probably need to do something quite substantial in the next couple of months if no fiscal policy response is forthcoming. Coming. We've had downgrades to the two UK banks, Lloyds and Royal Bank of Scotland, also downgrades to nine Portuguese banks. Are we likely to see further downgrades uh, next week and what implication will this have for risky assets? Well, I think there's no question that if we do receive rolling downgrades across a number of European financial institutions from the other rating agencies over the next week or two, there's going to be a significant impact upon investor risk aversion, perhaps far more negative than the relief rally we've seen this week, uh, culminating in the policy responses from the ECB we just spoke about. So there are some significant risks from the ratings agencies and possible downgrades in the next week. Now the euro dollar pretty much flat at this point in time. What is your outlook for the euro going forward? Um, are there of course any risks later on in the day when we have the US non-farm payrolls data and then next, next week as you say with the ongoing uh, concerns around the banking system in Europe? Well I think the risk for euro dollar as I mentioned is that we continue to fall. The US dollar is of course the safe haven of choice at the moment and the more serious the global financial market outlook becomes the stronger that safe haven influence of the dollar becomes so we expect euro dollar to continue to fall over the next couple of months and that fall could be exacerbated as more investors expect an ECB rate cut as I just mentioned. How low do you think it might fall to? Some are pointing to 130 do you think it could uh, fall all the way there and then break below that point? Yes, I think it's quite likely if you look at previous bouts of significant risk aversion, both in 2008 and then again in 2010, the moves in the US dollar index were quite substantial at 20% 20, 20 in some cases and 10 to 15% in others. We are nowhere near that sort of a uh, appreciation in the US dollar index yet. So if the, if the European crisis deteriorates further and banks become, uh, come under more pressure, we could see that US dollar rally extending much further than investors currently expect. If the risks are to the downside for riskier currencies, uh, what does this mean for the local unit which has closely tracked the euro dollar? Absolutely. At the moment we see peripheral currencies in developed economies and of course emerging market currencies very correlated to what's happening with the US dollar. And so with that correlation being so strong, I think the risk is for the RAND that we see further depreciation and a, quite a significant move up. At the moment it does look like in the next week or two we could retouch new highs and perhaps go through that 860 level and continue upwards. Whilst we have the dollar as seen as a, a riskier, a less riskier asset to hold and many are moving into the dollar uh, in times of you know, risk aversion, the yen has also been uh, benefiting from this. If you look at the yen dollar at this point in time, 76.60. Now the 75.76 level is that a level that the Central Bank of Japan has said is a level that they start getting uncomfortable with. Are we likely to see some intervention from the Central Bank of J Japan like we saw from the Swiss Bank? I think that is a key risk and as you point out the Swiss National Bank 
has been very strong in its intervention in the currency market and that has removed one of the available alternatives for investors to protect their wealth. So with so much uh, emphasis being placed on the US dollar, I think the residual demand for investors will probably come, as you point out, with the yen but also with the British pound and in particular with regards to the yen, I think we will see it strengthen against a number of currencies but perhaps not against the US dollar. If it does go down through that 76.50 level as you suggest, I think we will see another uh, big move by the MOF to push dollar yen higher back up towards that 80 level but I don't think we'll see any sort of a minimum uh, level put in place like we saw with the Swiss National Bank. Throwing forward to next week, could I just get an outlook for you in terms of RAN trading ranges that you're factoring in? Yeah, definitely. I think that what we can see at the moment is a floor somewhere around the uh, 77.75 level and a move potentially on those rolling bank down grades that we mentioned, perhaps up through that 8.60 level and perhaps as high as uh, 8.75. So it's going to be definitely an upward trajectory for uh, the RAND and perhaps a quite substantial one.